Fishing for pike and predators is completely different to most of the other specimen fish that the all-rounder angles for. Roach and rudd and tench, they're, they're in, in comparison, they're, they're kind of small species. Some of these prehistoric pike can grow massive, uh, fish to over 40 pounds. And, you know, they've got teeth. None of our other course fish have, have really got teeth so they are they are different to to most of the species that I fish for. Being an all-rounder I target uh, most of the freshwater species well all of them there's not enough time in the year to target every species you can dabble in them but to do a full campaign you're never going to fit them all in because you could be you know after a tench for two months in the spring so in recent years, I just haven't got back round to the pike. And, you know, I love my roach fishing and chub fishing in winter. So you kind of cherry pick your preferences. And that's what's happened. And before I, before I knew it, it was five years later and I hadn't had a proper go for a, for a pike or, um, or a big zander. Well, I did do a little bit last year, but not, you know, a real campaign. Um, so I was itching to get the pike rods out, give it a real good go this winter or well, last winter actually, sorry, because this is in reference to February. So it was, it was a good sort of eight months ago because we're on the bank now in autumn, uh, late autumn, November. So it was just great to sort of rekindle my, my love for the predators that I'd had back uh, five, six years ago when I was fishing for them on a the Medway. Pike are an extremely versatile uh, fish. They can be found in a number of different waters from rivers to state lakes, ponds, gravel pits. They're very adaptable and they live in a number of different waters. And I think that's what people really like about pike fishing, uh, that you don't have to go to specific areas in the country and fish certain waters. Uh, pretty much, you know, you find them, you find them all around, which is, which is great for the pike angler. Back in February was the starting point for my quest uh, for a big pike. The venue I chose was an unlikely starting point for a pike because it had, it had some history of fish being caught, but not in recent years. So it was a bit of the unknown. An old Oxford estate lake, just an, one of the most beautiful places that I've ever fished. It's surrounded by 200, 300 year old redwood trees. There's deer, pheasants, red kites. It's an, oh, it's, a, it's an amazing place to fish. Even if you don't catch, you just feel privileged to be out on the banks and, and very fortunate to be in such beautiful surroundings. But, oh, you've got lilies, you've got an old boathouse. It's got a real historic feel to it. You know, really mature and developed uh, bankside and just a pleasure to fish. You've got a main body of water, which is pretty deep. You know, it goes down to some reasonable depths. A couple of islands on it and it's, uh, it features everything, a few bays as well. So there was a lot to go at, um, a lot to explore, um, and a, a lot of areas to, to have a go. So be before I turned up, I, I had a good think about, you know, the venue that I wanted to, to target. Um, I'd mentioned about fishing for big pike on this lake to a few people, and, well, they looked at, looked at me like I was a bit loopy, to be honest. I mean, there's a history of otters on here, no real big pike had been seen. There wasn't really any history, especially not in recent years. And I just think from, from the start, you know, people thought, thought I was wasting my time, basically. You know, that's, that's kind of the fishing that I love, you know, a bit, of, a bit of the unknown. And even if I didn't catch, what a great place to blank. So I had a good think about how, how I wanted to target these pike and it was February. So I didn't want to fish in the deep water. They do come out of the deep water in February, um, but I knew that you know in a few weeks they'll be getting ready to spawn. And usually the big girls will move into the sort of semi-deep water um, adjacent to usually the shallow water where they move in and spawn. So that was a great starting point. And there was an arm that comes off the lake and it's, it's, it's a fairly long arm, it goes all the way down and uh, it's very weedy, it's very shallow. 
and there's a lovely drop off that drops into about nine, 10 feet. And that just seemed the perfect place to, to try and ambush one of these pike. So I set up in this area, fishing into the shallow water. When I arrived, uh, the weather had turned for the worst. Uh, the winds were howling down that end. It was, it was sort of gale force winds and I had no option really, but to put dead bait rods out and sort of sit it out. Um, I didn't get nothing. It was extremely slow start. And fortunately the weather cleared and I managed to get around the lake and take a more roving approach, uh, which I thought was gonna be you know, the most effective way of catching these fish, find these fish, because they're gonna be elusive, because there's obviously not many in there, if any. So I sort of had to wait for that weather to die down. But yep, I did spend a, a good bit of time up on that arm in the howling wind, getting absolutely battered, um, but for not one fish. The beauty of pike fishing is there's a number of different methods and ways in which you can fish for them. And, you know, I had made sure that I had bought with me the equipment to do that, those different methods because they suit different situations. So after the dead baiting, which was a, a bit of a failure, just sitting on rods, I got the drift beater float out. Now, a drift beater's perfect when you've got a slight breeze, which is what it was like, and it was blowing down the end. And the idea was to cover as much water as possible and find those fish. Effectively, drift a bait over the weed where the fish are sitting, hiding, sitting in the weeds, and then bang, come up and hit them. So you can cover a lot more water, which means you've got more chance of finding the fish. I got it out, but it didn't really, it didn't really pay off. I had a couple of jacks on the float. Um, it was great fun, great fishing, but the wind actually changed direction. And it got to the point where the, the float was sort of blowing into the margins, a bit too much for my liking. And also, I don't know why, but that time of year on this, on this lake, the weed was really high. And you know, on some of the trots, as it were, because it was like a trot, you kind of let it just run down the, run down the margin of the, of the bank. It was actually getting caught up in, in the weeds. So it worked, I caught fish, but it wasn't the way forward. So I thought it was in weed there. The float was sort of moving back towards me. And I thought, I'll bend into it. And what do you know? Got a fish. Nice little jackpot. Nice little little jackpot. Not a big one, but caught on the drift method, which is a it's a fantastic way of catching them. Covered in leeches, so he's obviously been sitting there for a while, and uh, it's a great way to find them. Whoa. I put in a, a solid days roving around the lake. I tried numerous areas, I tried, I tried loads of spots, and I had a couple of jacks to show for my effort. I mean, you know, I was, I was beginning to, to worry and think, oh, well, have the otters knocked out any big pike that were here? So I wasn't really optimistic at that point because the amount of effort I put in, uh, moving around the lake and just, just trying everything I could. And, you know, it's, it's sort of notorious for jack pike. Uh, they get picked up quite regularly. And to, for the effort I put in to have just had two and then nothing on the dead bait, to be honest, it, it wasn't looking good. So I'd fished hard and I'd been on the lake now for three days, uh, which, is a, which is a long old session um, and just a few jacks to show for my efforts. I thought, well, I'm heading home with my towel between my legs. I had a great sort of session fishing in some beautiful surroundings, some great scenery. Uh, so it's never a wasty trip when you go fishing because I just love being outside. But I'd basically resigned to the fact that, you know, it was over and I hadn't managed to catch my target pike. So I got everything packed up. I loaded up the car and uh, I drove around to an area and I thought, I'll, I'll give it one last shout. The rods were sort of halved up, just put in the, put in the back of the car, everything packed away and I thought, no bite alarms or anything like that. Just flick out a few mackerel dead baits, a couple of mackerel dead baits. Just put the rods on the decks, deck and just watching the tips. And I kid you not, it was probably 10, 15 minutes before I was going to head home. I was pretty much ready to just pick the rods up, wind them up and be on my way. And the left hand rod has just nudged. And it's just given a little sort of 
just see the tip going slightly. And so I pulled a bit of line off and loosened up, and then you could see it was, you know, it was pulling tight. I was into a fish, but still in my mind, I'm thinking, Jack Pike, you know, that's, that's what it's gonna be. I'm gonna end, end this session on a, on a three pound pike. But, you know, you never know. So concentrated and, and, and pulled some more line out. I never like to leave it too long. I'd rather lose a fish and have a deep hooked fish. Um, but I gave it a little bit of line, tightened up, reeled in and bent into this fish. And I knew this was the one, this was the one I'd been after. All of that time trying to trying to catch a decent pike out of this lake, and now now I was connected to one. So you can imagine what my heart was like. I mean, it was it was just pumping. I didn't want to lose this fish. So much effort had gone into it, you know. And uh, I played it carefully, as I always do. As I always do. But pike, you know, they're very unpredictable. Big mouths, bony mouths, a few head shakes, and it could go. Um, it didn't put up the biggest of fights, and I think because, you know, these fish had probably never seen a hook and it was probably like, what, what's going on? You know, what's going on? Some blokes trying to drag me out of the water. Um, you know, they weren't sort of clued up fish. They definitely weren't riggy, uh, but just not a lot. But anyway, it came up and I could see its back and it was a proper croc. And, you know, I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm so nervous at this point and I'm sort of trying to play it. Then the net comes out. I'm like, get over, get over. And it's quite difficult to, to, to net on your own because they're so long. So the tail, and it was nearly in, and I lifted it up. Bullseye. <laughs> got one. I got one. I looked down. I knew it was a good fish. You know, I, I just sort of took a bit of a moment to just sort of calm down and just breathe and go, yes, got one in the net. Um, I didn't know how big. I knew it was over 15 pounds by the look of it. But I'll give, uh, give Jack a call. He got down here. Um, and we, we sort of weighed, weighed her up and she was over 20 pounds, 20 pounds and, uh, and a few ounces and I was elated. Look at that fish. What an incredible creature. Almost certainly has never seen a hook before. Wow. That's really hurting my back, that is. She's a big girl, all right? What a fish. Made up with this one, really am. I can't tell you how happy I was, you know. It's not, it's not the biggest pike in the world, but it means so much from a venue like this. One that had sort of been discredited for big pike and one that was really the unknown. This fish almost certainly had never seen a hook. And how exciting is that? and um, an absolute privilege to catch that fish. And yeah, it was a special moment, loved it. So that 20 pound beautiful pike uh, from the estate lake uh, was signaled the end of my mini campaign on that venue. I had had a part of the a stretch of the Trent in mind for some pike fishing and during some recent filming a matchman had actually had a huge pike come up and try to take a chunk out, out of a, a pretty big bream. So it looked hopeful and it looked the perfect place. To, to head to in, 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 with the chance of catching a big river pike. So the trend is not exactly close to my, my, my neck of the woods. Um, it's a good four and a half hour drive from Kent. So it was gonna be quite a big commitment, especially for just the day and the night that I, I had planned up there. Um, but the Trent is, is, a, is an amazing river. It's a mighty river. It's extremely powerful, has some great specimens in it. It's known for its big Xander as well which was always in the back of my mind. Um, some great pike fishing, and obviously you've got the barbel and some big roach and perch that have come out recently. So it's a fantastic river. It's extremely powerful. Uh, you've got to have the right kit to fish it. But I was really excited about getting up there and giving it a go. So the plan of attack uh, for the session on the Trent was to fish for the pike during the day. And then because it's known for big Xander, fish for the Xander at night. Now this was using the same kit the three pound test curve piker rods and just 
at night just changed the traces to a smaller, smaller size eights from the sixes that I was using for pike and changed my mackerel baits to fresh water baits. So subtle changes, but with the mind of targeting a different species during those prime hours, because obviously Xander are very nocturnal um, and pike not so much. Um, so that was the plan uh, rig wise. Um, it was just a simple case of having uh, an uptrace, which is extremely important when you're fishing for pike. Um, my good mate, John Merritt, who's a great angler, lovely bloke, he makes them for me. Now, 100 pound mono, um, down, to a, down to a clip, which the trace goes on and a buffer bead with the run ring just above it with your lead. And when you get a fish, it can roll over your main line, it can go up into the gill rakers and it can cut you off. And that can be deadly for a fish. So, you know, fishing for these, fishing for pike safely is paramount. When you go pike fishing, always take the correct tools with you. You need some long nose pliers, you need some snippers, some long handle snippers. So just make sure you've got the right kit when you go. You know, you've got to be fishing safely. And there was quite a few measures we put in place uh, for fishing the Trent. So for example, it's very rocky. So one of the main uh, safety features we had was just a rotten bottom down to the lead. Now that just enabled us to when we get snagged up, the lead would get jammed. And again, you don't want to leave a rig out there baited because that could be disastrous for the fish. So with the rotten bottom, you can pull through, that line will snap, the lead will come off and you can get your bait in. It's also worth mentioning that use heavy braid, 60 pound braid minimum. That's not because you need 60 pound braid to, to catch a 20 pound pike. It's so that if you do get snagged up, you can straighten those trebles out. You can't leave a baited rig out in the river. That is disaster. So it's really important that you, you fish for pike safely. And if you're not that experienced, go with someone that is. Do your research because, you know, these creatures, especially the big ones, you know, they're old and, you know, they, there's, there's few of them. So we really need to look after it because it's our sport at the end of the day. So in order for resistance free rigs to work effectively, you've got to fish with them correctly. If you're using a run ring and with a, with a non-resistance rig, you've got to use a big lead. If you use a small lead, it can get slightly stuck in the silt and as that fish takes, it will move the lead slightly and then you've lost that resistance free uh, quality. So always use a heavy lead, minimum five ounces. Um, I mean, on the trend, it's so powerful, especially the tidal section that we were targeting. You know, you can go up to sort of seven, seven ounces, um, which, is, which is a lot. But remember, it's a big, powerful river. And that combined with the tidal currents, um, you, you need the proper kit for fishing it. Um, arriving late afternoon, we had a good look around the venue. There was a lovely sweeping bend, which, which had a, a, some slack water in front of it and it just gradually went down, sort of a muddy bank to some sand, and then there was quite a few rocks as it got deeper. It was a bit clear beyond that, and then it just dropped straight off. Um, it, looked a great, it looked a great area to try and catch the predator. We fished the evening with the pike set up, so that was mackerel dead baits, um, and then it was time to change over um, for a potential Xander. I swapped the, the traces for some smaller ones that were closer together and, and size eight, semi-barbed, with the barb going into the actual fish. Uh, that's very important for fish safety again. I put two out on, if I remember rightly, I put two out on small roach, and then the middle rod I put out on a, on a dead bait perch, which was something a bit different. I just thought, oh, why not? Anyways, um, it got, as it was getting dark, it must have been two, three hours into dark. So we were just sitting there, you know, chewing the fat, cooking some food, and just having a natter, when all of a sudden, middle rod, do 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 do, like a, pro a proper bite, you know, it's just like run down there, all excited, bent, bent into this fish, and I could tell straight away, yeah, you, well, you know when it's a good fish. You know, there's quite a few little zander in there, and you sort of, you you never know what you're going to sort of bend into, but. This was a proper fish and the rod hooped right over and the fight was immense. And, you know, my heart started to go a bit because I was thinking, oh, if this isn't a pike, this could be a really big Xander, you know, a real special fish. So I was really nervous whilst playing it, but 
it was taking line, the fight was incredible. And then after, I think after, well, a few minutes I was fighting it for, and then it popped up and I saw the silver on the side and it was a Xander. And, I thought, <laughs> and then it was like all panic. Um, you know, out, out the window went all the controlled, you know, the, I, I was just, get, get in the net, get it in the net, get it in the net. So I was really in, I levered it over and fortunately it went in first time. There it is, mate, and don't punch it in. It's, it's almost there. Close, it's close in your thing. Slowly does it. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Oh, yes. And you know, the first thing you do, don't you, is you grab the side of it and you look down oh, and you look down at your prize. And it was enormous. Certainly a PB for me, um, Xander wise. I had doubles off Thames and, and some fish, you know, up, up in Cambridge. But this was this was different gravy. Look at that. Oh. You know, it was just spectacular to see and to catch. I mean, on the, on the scales, she went 14 pound, four ounce, which was a PB, an amazing creature, a huge sander from the river as well. I couldn't have been happier. And uh, that, that definitely made my trip. Amazing fish. After returning that fantastic Xander uh, back to its watery home, it was probably two hours later when the right hand rod went off. Uh, got a lovely run on the right hand rod, got down there and uh, managed a 15 pound pike. I mean, we didn't weigh it, um, we didn't want to, you know, it was, it was at night, so we just wanted to get it back. But it was around 15 pounds, somewhere like that. A lovely fish, beautiful markings on it. Do you think tomorrow is going to be busy, mate? Could be. And great to know that you know there were pike in the swim for, for our morning session because we had the whole day uh, in the morning. So that was really good to know. There she goes. That was the last action um, during the night, and uh, morning arrived. Uh, a lot of anticipation because you know knew there were pike in the swim from that catch earlier on in the night. Uh, got the rods. The rigs changed uh, back for pike, you know, bigger traces on there with size six, dead bait mackerel again, and chucked them out to the spots. And it wasn't long before the right hand rod, a couple of bangs on the right hand rod, and that was away. So I got down there, quickly picked it up, and bent into a, a really substantial fish. Now, it was all a bit chaotic, to be honest with you, because the tidal trend, when the water goes out, you're left with this sort of mud slot. Now, that's fine at first, but after a while, the treads on your wellies basically fill up and you're effectively ice skating. Good fish, mate. Have you got, we need that next. So you've got no grip whatsoever. So you can imagine what it looked like. I'm like skating over to Morocco, trying not to fall over, and I've hooked into this pike. I've, I'm trying to call for Jack. I'm like, Jack, Jack, I'm in. So Jack's come along, but he's in the same sort of trouble as well. So he's like, Got sliding all over the place, he's probably got a bit of the sky, a bit of the bit of the ground. He got to me and he's holding on to me, I'm holding on to him, and it, it was it was like something out of the Chuckle Brothers sketch, you know, to me, to you. It, it was like that. It must have I mean as a bystander, if someone was watching, they probably would have thought, oh, what's going on here? Um it didn't exactly come across as, as professional, but it was just so hard to sort of to get a grip and actually get, get this fish in. But bent into this fish and the power. It was just, it was just immense. And as I mentioned, the there was no grip whatsoever on the boots. And I'm not exactly the largest bloke in the world. And at one point, I think I moved about two feet as it went on a run because I was tightened right up. So the clutch was tightened right up because of the rocks. You know, you want to get them right above it. You don't want to get snagged up whilst playing a fish. Um, so yeah, I was like basically like mud skating for about two feet. <laughs> and uh, it took some line, knew it was a good fish, and then it came up and I saw the back of it and it was a proper croc. And it was just, my heart was going again like, like the other fish, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proper one. It's what we were there for, you know. And I tried, I got the net in the water, but the tidal trend, I mean the trend in general, is 
the pace of the river, when you've got a 42 inch landing net, you've got so much drag on it that it's hard to, to even hold it in the river, let alone net a long pike with it. So I've got the rod up like this, I've got the net in this other hand, I can't feel my arm because it's, the river's trying to pull it out of my hands. And I've got the fish up and I'm trying to cantilever it over the net. I think like I've got half of it over the draw cord and I just couldn't get the, couldn't get the rest of it in. So force it, so it's, it's almost in. And I'm asking Jack to help. I'm like, J grab the net, net it, net it. But obviously he can't, he's got the camera and he's filming it. So I don't know what I was thinking, but you know, moments like that, your, your brain just goes around, you know, you just want to get the fish in, you kind of forget everything else. Um, in the end, I just thought, oh, but I think I dropped the net, um, the rod, sorry, when three quarters of it was over the draw cord and I just sort of went forward and just like lifted it up over the rest of the pike and, and peered down and it was in there. He's in. And it was a huge pike, and for a river especially, um, it was a really, really incredible creature. And I mean, yeah, it, it, was, it was almost comical, that whole scene. Um, like I said, if someone was, was a bystander watching that, I think they would have had a chuckle to themselves. Um, but the main thing is, we got the fish in, got it in safely, and it was a big one. I was sort of, I was in disbelief, to be honest, when I, when I first netted it and looked down, um, I was in disbelief to have caught a 20 uh, previously on the estate lake, but then to get a 20 pounder out of the river, um, it was something really special. So there's mud everywhere, we're sliding all over the place, we'd had quite a bit of rain and winds and, you know, it was far from ideal conditions, but to be honest, just the way I like it, you know, that, you know, you're fishing, getting nice and dirty and out there in, the, in, in those sort of harsh conditions and really facing nature. How's that? A River 20. An absolutely well, an amazing creature from the river. Oh, so heavy. What a fish. Beautiful. We hoisted her on the scales in the sling and she went £21.9 ounce. So, in my mini campaign for a big pike, I'd had a 20 off of Stillwater, the Estate Lake, and now a 20 off the river. Um, yeah, beyond my expectations for, for the year, uh, to be sure, to get back into pike fishing after, after a few years break, that was the best way to, uh, to begin. So that was a, a recap of uh, fishing in February, um, eight months ago now, but I'm on the Estate Lake as we speak, after Pike. So from previous experience here, um, I'm not gonna give up. I'm gonna fish till the last minute because you never know what can happen. So always go on information that you've heard when targeting fish, and, but never give up and dream big.